begin in around five minutes or so. Thank you. Good afternoon. So I did cop. So I did cop. So I did cop. So I did cop. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Chris Tiffany. I'm the director of sales at DP World. It's my honor to welcome you to today's event, the Digitalization and the Future of Freight Conference at the Bangkok Marriott Marquis Queens Park, co-sponsored by the Digital Freight Alliance and TIFA, the Thailand International Freight Forwarders Association. The Digital Freight Alliance by DP World was founded in 2020 and has over 3,900 members across 190 countries. The Alliance is a digital network designed to provide freight forwarders with web-based tools and commercial networking opportunities. We're very excited to start our Southeast Asia Roadshow here in Thailand with you. We kick off this inaugural event of the Digital Freight Alliance in the Kingdom of Thailand with a safety briefing from Kun Lin Bing who is Manager of Loss Prevention here at the Marriott Marquis Queens Park. Kunlin Bing Kap for the safety briefing. Thank you, Kap. It's okay. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Bangkok Marriott Marquis Queens Park. My name is Jesada Leung Kijamnat from my nickname is Lin Bing from Loss Prevention Department. Today, I'm come here to give you a safety information before start your meeting. The first of all, the our hotel, we have the two language the announcement. When emergency announcement, when you hear the short alarm, only the announce, sound announcement, not the, the text, the conversation, only the sound announcement. Don't be panicked. We'll be go up to the check at the scene 
and reply back to the organize organize team. Just first of all, when announcement uh, the emergency announcement, the fire exit stair is nearly your your room. You leave the room and turn left. We will check everyone go to the lobby. The our hotel we have the two assembly point in front of the hotel and back of the hotel connect to the Benja Sili Park. This very big area. And so the finally, today we have not planned to testing the fire alarm and not test the fire deal. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kunlin Bing. Workplace safety is a cornerstone value for DP World, and we promote safety in all the areas we are privileged to work in. Our agenda today includes a keynote addressed by Dr. Tom James, who joins us today from Singapore, and a panel discussion with some industry experts sharing their perspectives on digitalization. Please make sure to stay after the presentations for a networking session with beverages and canopies on the 37th floor. For those who are joining us virtually through the live stream component of our event, we're happy to welcome you, and we appreciate your participation in the Digitalization and the Future of Freight conference. So without any uh, further ado, I'd like to uh, present to you Kun Vi Thun. Uh, Kun Vi Thun Senti Bunyarat is the president of the Thai International Freight Forwarders Association, TIFA, and uh, is uh, a very respected member of the logistic community and a leader of the logistic community here. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Kun Vi Thun. My personal honor to welcome all the members of TIFA as well, including uh, Kun Suid and all the other members of the Gamagan as well. Thank you very much. Kun Vi Thun, thank you. Good afternoon, my fellow freight forwarder friend, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Time is flying. Today is July 19, 2022. It means that the first half of the year 22 has already gone and starting to the second half of the year. Since COVID-19 pandemic, at the beginning of the year 2020, throughout the early this year 2022, we all are in difficulty with the many restrictions in operation, such as government authority are closed, shipping line office are closed, commencing work from home, and et cetera. However, we all have our own solution to recover our hard time situation. Most importantly, we still making money during such a hard time of the COVID-19 pandemic. Though many countries, including Thailand, almost get rid of the COVID, tourists and businessmen starting to do traveling. Seems global economy should getting better. But we just encountered the China lockdown 0% COVID policy, the Ukraine war and the Russian war, the heavily global inflation, which caused the uncertain economy, result to the heavily fluctuation in the global demand. This is very hard to predict and very challenging to our logistic industry for the second half of the year. Most of our friends in this room are local and independent SME freight forwarders. Our business culture and business model are completely different with those global or multinational freight forwarders. We are mostly rely on or tie up with the agency network Sorry, I don't want to disclose the name, but you guys know very well who is who and who they are. The mentioning network will facilitate us for the agency recommendation and the each network with some financial guarantee of protection. Once we are facing with fraud settlement from counterpart agent, on top of that, 
the process of offering, retending, and hunting is really done by manual. Some of SME forwarders are just struggling and software or lack of powerful operating system. This caused them far behind to compete with the global forwarders. If anyone wish to invest in having such a powerful infrastructure, it's meaning big money investment and could not afford to have that. My dear fellow friends, the challenging and competition is yet carry on. The faster getting into variety business opportunity by using digitalization as a tool are big advantage. According to this, is it good if have someone providing us a business opportunity under the digital networking with a powerful digital software infrastructure without heavy investment? In this respect, I would like to introduce Digital Freight Alliance, or known as DF Alliance. The DF, the DF Alliance is a product under the DP world, the powerful digital freight system which interface and synchronize with many parties with our logistics service provider and service user. To cut it short, and won't waste your time any longer, I would like to return this space back to Kun Chris for his further demonstration. Thank you everyone in this room for your kind participation and attention. Compliment, Kap. Thank you again, Kundi Tun, for your remarks. The Digital Freight Alliance is delighted to welcome TIFA members to our forum, and we're pleased to collaborate with TIFA and your membership on a variety of topics to support the growth of small and medium enterprise forwarders in Thailand. little digital difficulty up here, sorry. We're fortunate today to have the opportunity also to listen to an expert in the field of trade credit finance, Dr. Tom James, to share his view on digitalization and the future of world trade as our keynote speaker. A few words on Dr. James's uh, background. Dr. Tom James has 33 plus years international experience in the areas of commodity, energy, and emissions markets. He's considered an expert in his field of trading investment and risk management. An industry thought leader, innovator, and successful fintech entrepreneur, fund manager, and published author, Tom has co-founded Tradeflow Capital, the world's first fund group investing specifically in and enabling global commodity trade for SME sized firms, all made possible through digitized supply chain operational processes. The group launched its first fund in 2018, and thanks to digital processes, has enabled many billions of dollars of SME containerized imports and experts, exports. Dr. James's commercial exposure has been gained through a broad range of senior executive roles in commodity trading, investment management, commodity finance, and technology architecture. His consultation is sought by governments and multinationals for advice in market developments and the health of business ecosystems. Dr. James has documented and shared his extensive industry expertise through a series of 12 books and publications with Wiley Finance, Paul Grave Macmillan, Springer, and De Gruyter. Some of these textbooks have been translated into other languages, including Chinese, and have become required material for professional exams and university courses, and have been cited by NASA and other government agencies and academics around the world. Please join me in welcoming our keynote speaker on digitalization and the future of freight, Dr. Tom James. Thank you. Well, good 
distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. It's, it's, uh, it's a great pleasure to be here today. Um, I'm truly humbled to be given this opportunity, especially uh, at the inaugural event in Asia for the DF Alliance. Um, a big thank you to the DF Alliance and also the DP World Management for the invitation. And I also know to the, the great team that have made today's event possible. Uh, a lot of work has gone into that. <coughs> um, I think <laughs> the DF Alliance uh, wanted me to be here today um, because our company, Tradeflow Capital, is a good example, I hope, of how digitization and digitalization of processes in the supply chain can help SME firms in their import and export of goods. Now, it is also uh, enabling the, the trade financing and investment that pays for those goods, and uh, importantly to you, the freight <laughs> for those goods uh, around the world. And obviously the good news is that at least, you know, the global trade is recovering, so <laughs> that's some positive news. Uh, despite a world of uh, a lot of negative news in the markets, etc. So I think um, we would all agree at least that the future of world trade depends on many, many factors. There are many external factors that we have to deal with, geopolitics as well as weather and everything else that can get in the way of things. Um, but certainly one of the key and um, I may be biased, but I think uh, the key factor is broad access to finance and especially at affordable rates for our SME customers. So in, in the freight forwarding business, your customers are also our customers. We're helping fund and finance those trades uh, for import and export. Especially now, it's very important to help SMEs uh, small, medium-sized enterprises get access to funding, any funding, um, especially now with the U.S. dollar interest rates going up. And in fact, the all of the research that I see points towards those interest rates moving higher this year, uh, maybe by more than one percentage point in the very near future uh, from the Federal Reserve, but at least the research is also showing that once inflation is under control next year, the market is implying that rates will go back down again. So fingers crossed it's just a, a short-term blip to control inflation there. But the one concern is the trade finance gap. And certainly... Uh, our customers around the world, the small, medium-sized firms that are exporting and importing goods, uh, moving it uh, through your companies, were already having a tough time even before COVID hit. And when COVID hit, we saw the financing availability, the options available to companies, particularly in emerging markets like Asia, Pacific, uh, dry up. Um, We've seen more banks who traditionally are lending money for trade finance uh, with withdrawing from the market altogether in some cases um, or changing their geographical focus. And so I would have to say that from our experience at Trade for Capital, the, the future of the financing capacity of future world trade very much depends on digitalization. And, you know, I will discuss how certainly as a digitized trade finance fund, we've been able to remove some of the challenges um, and some of the cost barriers of helping um, the SME uh, companies out. And I think, um, you know, we're helping address this problem, which was $1.7 trillion before COVID. And now, by some bank estimates, 
is as high as $3.4 uh, trillion. That is a problem, but it's also an opportunity. And it's an opportunity that Tradeflow Capital we're working on, other banks and funds are working on, but there's one critical point. <laughs> it hinges, actually, on the digitization of trade. Without the digitization, the removal of inefficient and paper-based processes, we cannot then move on to the next step, which we're starting to see, certainly in the DP World Group, which is why I'm so excited to be here talking about digitalization as well, where we're able to automate processes. We're able to, to introduce artificial intelligence and other technologies to help us improve not only our businesses, at either as a funder, as a freight forwarder, or even for our customers, our SMEs, um, who are moving products around the world. That is why, you know, I'm only up to a couple of slides in, in my opening remarks. You know, we hear the terms uh, building our business to be future-proof um, or future-ready. Um, I think the key point in the opening here is to say that right here and right now, digitalization of all the elements of the supply chain uh, is already moving at a rapid pace, especially in the area of the financing of supply chains. You're experts in freight. So the last thing I'm going to do is lecture about freight. <laughs> but there is, and I hope through my presentation you'll see the symbiotic, the the partnership between funding and freight and the importance of digitization uh, for all our businesses. Our company, Tradeflow Capital, would not exist without digitization. We would not be here if it was not for digitization of already many parts of the supply chain business, whether it's electronic bills of lading or electronic invoicing or electronic tracking of cargo, etc. Without this, we wouldn't be able to do what we do, and we wouldn't be able to start helping uh, remove a part of that trade finance gap and keep trade moving. In the past, banks would receive liquidity from governments, from central banks, and that liquidity would then be distributed and loaned or lent down into and distributed within economies. Unfortunately, post the global financial crisis, with a lot of new regulations, a lot of new controls, I'm not blaming the banks, but the fact is, is that it's just become very hard for them to lend into the small, medium-sized enterprises. And within the bulk commodity space, we're finding even transactions below $15 million of value is starting to get too small. Uh, you know, for many of the traditional trade finance banks out there. My talk, therefore, is focused more on our journey in financing enabling billions of dollars of trade since 2018, investment supporting SMEs all over the world that was only made possible by digitizing our processes, our internal processes. We had to get that done first. And then thanks to companies like DP World, who have the vision to digitalize their processes and, and offer services, we can now scale even faster on a global basis. In fact, we prefer to work with SME import exporters who will use a digitized freight forward and, and services like those provided by the DP World and DF Alliance. And we have already started discounting our cost of financing those trades if 
they use a fully digitized process because it brings transparency and allows us to monitor where goods are, what condition they're in, and more importantly, control that security of our investment. At TradeFlow, we have first-hand experience of digitalization of supply chains, which has enabled more trade, which should mean, hopefully, more business for you as digitally enabled freight forwarders. But let's just double check what we mean by digitization. So first, this has been the slow, hard process for many decades in different areas. The first electronic bills of lading actually came out in the early 2000s. We had the, and then we've seen since then a very slow adoption. Even during COVID, we could see an increase and certainly COVID and the lockdowns, which gave us all an unprecedented, never seen before situation in terms of both financial risk management and physical risk management from an operational level, um, you know, we saw an increase in digitization and using electronic systems. But it's still been, you know, <coughs> slowly, slowly. But we started to see now, this year in particular, a big uh, increase in that. Digitization is the first key step. It doesn't change our processes, just makes them more efficient and gets us off bits of paper and makes stuff into manageable data. The second phase now, which we're starting to really see speed up, is the digitalization, where we see the using of that data for ourselves, as well as helping our SME customers actually look at how they can improve their business as well. <coughs> we can look also, we're here to also make money and enable trade. Digitalization helps us look at offering new services, offering information and services to the SMEs, like where, where are the goods, what condition are the goods in, um, is there, what's the, the ETA, um, automated customs clearance, so connecting the dots and making life easier <coughs> are all services that we can all charge additional money for. But also, very importantly, <coughs> if the system is more efficient, <coughs> it will also allow our SME customers to do more trades. If the, the process is more efficient and money can then be moved around more effectively and efficiently, then also it means that money can be put to use faster. So the actual, the speed of money, the, mom the momentum of money speeds up and that's good for allowing growth in trade as well. A, a case in point, when we started using electronic bills of lading in 2018, we, for some bulk cargoes initially, and now containers, we were able to receive ownership of the goods and control of the goods and re finance the cargo for our customer all within five minutes. And they had the money in their bank account within 15 minutes. That process would normally have taken many weeks of <laughs> bits of paper flying around uh, the world, hopefully not getting lost, right? And so this is just the tip of the iceberg. Looking at the broader situation in terms of the benefits that we've witnessed from the financing side. So these are benefits that have been possible because um, we've digitized our process, but then also at the same time, internally, you know, digitize those processes, but at the same time, the SMEs are incentivized <laughs> to use those digital processes because they know at the, at the end of the rainbow, they have some pot of gold, they have the financing they need to do that trade or do more trades um, as matters progress. And so, 
definitely the big one is the reduction in time, costs, errors, and fraud. To bring confidence back also to the traditional lenders in trade finance, you know, we need to bring more transparency, more touchy-feely, as we'd sort of say, so that you know, the traditional lenders as well, uh, like we've experienced, can feel that they have visibility of where the, the cargo is and, and who's controlling it, where it is, as that is their main security often for trade finance. During COVID, before COVID, unfortunately, there were frauds. If we analyze those, most of them were around double financing of the same containers or cargoes, copies of paper, bills of lading, um, some genu they're genuine but copies <laughs> of the same cargo. And there are initiatives which are starting to allow uh, people that invest in cargoes or lend money like our company to exchange information um, and digitally check if people are trying to do this double or triple financing. But that's only possible if you know the actual supply chain is digitized, the paperwork is digitized, so that there is irrefutability, immutability, and confidence that that bill of lading or that information is really coming from a strong, good source. And that's where the digitization with freight forwarding can really help because that is where the information flow begins. You know, bad data in, bad data out. So that's where the digitization of the actual logisticals part can give confidence to lenders and hopefully generate more business. Obviously, there's stronger engagement with customers and suppliers, offering other services, etc. cetera, um, being future ready. But as I mentioned before, I think it's actually also about being now ready because I think we're seeing a, a big jump step in terms of change in digitization and it's being driven by the liquidity, by the money. You know, there's a lot of cash out there that's looking for new homes and trade finance as an asset class is something which is really starting to pick up momentum because equities and bonds and these other financial markets are not performing. And there's a lot of concern and risk and worry in the markets. So, you know, we've witnessed it in our funds, but also other firms as well are seeing a lot of cash, new capital coming in, which is being committed into supporting and financing trade. But that needs, that can only find a home thanks to the effective digitization of the logistical processes. So I'd say that uh, the, the key thing that we've certainly experienced thanks to digitization in the supply chains is being able to give that broader non-bank access to capital sources and lower cost of capital. Because it's like, imagine an insurance company. You go to in get insurance as a driver of a truck, you know, but you've lost all your documentation. You've been driving for 20 years. You have a great record, but n you don't have any proof of that. You know, you're going to be charged the highest premium possible for driving that truck. You know, having the digital footprint, the track record there, which is irrefutable, can also, and the transparency around the transaction will in the future also enable, I'm sure, and we expect insurance companies to be able to give much more uh, focused and more uh, accurate charging of insurance as well. Sometimes, okay, it's going to mean we're going to pay more, but probably at least we're going to be paying more a more realistic figure for the risk. So if we change behavior and improve our operational processes, we could then witness that cost of insurance going lower. At the moment, even we're a good safe driver, our premiums still go up every year because someone else isn't. <laughs> so, you know, this is the sort of analogy. As the data becomes digitized, lots of uh, other benefits come for the industry. In terms of the trade finance gap, so as I said, it is key 
that the logistical side of the business globally becomes digitized. With that, at least, I think, 65% of the reason why our SME companies, some of those will be your customers, cannot get trade finance for their cargo. Um, most of it is because not enough data. It keeps coming back to data. Well, we don't have transparency. We don't understand the, the trade. We don't have visibility of the trade. We have KYC concerns. Did it really come from that country? Is it really going to that country? Is it really cocoa or is it bullets? You know. So again, this is the key, key issues. This is from a survey with Asia Development Bank, so it's very pertinent to us here in Asia. Um, why a lot of the SME trades get rejected. Now, also 15% is low bank profits, but then again, digitization, if it, if it makes it easier for the bank or the lenders to process the data, it's gonna reduce their costs and lower that bar and enable people to actually uh, lend, hopefully more money into this space. Here's a real life case, and I think uh, this was just last month. This is uh, our first end-to-end -end fully digitized transaction supported with DP World and Tradeflow Capital. We were introduced to a customer, an SME, and a trade through the DP World Cargoes platform, which helps SMEs finance transactions. They passed digitally the Know Your Customer information, which we then processed digitally in our systems to check uh, AML and KYC. Um, that was all done digitally. The trade was submitted digitally in terms of what the customer wanted to do. In this case, it was actually cocoa, uh, coffee, sorry, this one, coffee in uh, actually a warehouse had arrived in Jebel Ali in Dubai. And so we're able to digitally sign the purchase contract, buy the stock from the customer there, and in a very short space of time, in a matter of days, pass half a million dollars of cash across to the end customer, which relieved their working capital constraint, enabled them to go and do other business as well. And all of this, the, the AML KYC, the trading, the trade, the, the, the documentation, completely digital. Even the warehouse certificate, in this case, we could do digitally as well. Um, that was through DMCC with the Dubai government there. But also, I'm sure the DP World uh, staff and DF Alliance will also be able to tell you about their developments of their own in-house uh, control documents, their HBLs, which we're helping to pilot, which is really exciting, where you have real visibility of where things are, and you're able to actually control, and at a push of a button, transfer those uh, ownership back to the end user. In red on the left here, you'll see all the reasons why we probably would not have been able to do this trade without digitization. Customers overseas, warehouses overseas, we're in Singapore, concerns over oversight of control, getting the data in time, but everything <coughs> was digitized. And also now uh, in Singapore, we can log in from anywhere actually, not just Singapore, log in and actually pallet by pallet actually send that cargo back uh, to the cus end customer so they can then remove it from the warehouse or do whatever they need to do with it. Um, that again means that the cost of managing that transaction is down, which means we could reduce the cost of funding that inventory, in this case inventory storage uh, for the customer. And so this is sort of how you know we'd built our internal digitization so that we could run profitably as a fund manager because we're not a trader. Um, but to help SMEs, instead of lending money, we take ownership and control of the cargo. And so that enables us to help very new companies as well who may not have enough track record even to talk to banks yet. 
But it's very exciting how we can plug in to the cargo system, but then also leverage the other digital services from DP World, uh, which is all part of the, the DF Alliance. But that's only possible. We can only help more SMEs. We can only uh, fund more trade if freight forwarders digitize. <coughs> so enabling trade, we've been able to help many hundreds of SMEs and we plan to help many thousands more. Been able to execute billions of dollars with our own uh, fund, non-bank funding. But it's all been made cost effective and scalable thanks to digitization. Without the technology becoming cost effective and helping us monitor hundreds of cargoes at one time with a very small staff, it just wouldn't be possible what we're doing. To put into perspective, we have 15 staff in Singapore. You know, we have over 200 cargoes on the water or in containers. You know, we'd in the past, we would have had to look at having hundreds of staff, a full shipping operation, etc. It's just not possible. But thanks to digitization and automation, we could do that. So I think my message in closing really is we've been able to create this business and help trade because of digitization. And this is now an industry trend because you know we're seeing a lot of standards a lot of discussions with the World Trade Organization, the International Chamber of Commerce, who we're working with, also who are creating digital standard initiatives. Um, the obviously, there are groups and associations for container trade. People are starting to build standards so that we can have interoperability and systems can talk to one another. And so we can get eventually this integrated global and digitized world. You know, it's exciting for us that more logistics providers and freight forwarders can digitize, can plug in to systems like DP Cargo's finance, uh, link to other bank networks and funding platforms, but those SMEs can only do that effectively if their freight forwarders are digitized. And also, it's, you know, it's a soft sell, but obviously SMEs can then later on uh, do things with the data that you can provide them as a freight forwarder. So, closing comments, I would say the future of finance for export and import requires real-time transparency, the tracking of goods, the monitoring of security documents, insurance, shipping, freight, customs clearance automation, it's all can only be made possible by digitization of processes and digitalization then to improve those processes. So it all helps the transparency and real-time monitoring and it's already helping in bits and pieces access to funding for import export trades. But the trend looks like it's going to become the general accepted standard practice in the future as banks, alternative funders and lenders like Trade Flow fight fraud and try to uh, make liquidity available cost effectively and quickly to SMEs in particular. I would have to say that I think there is logic in what I say when what helps investors and lenders help your customers grow their business and trade volume. Um, what helps your customers should help your, you keep business and attract more business. And so I'd have to say to be part of what we see and how we see the future of trade shaping up, because that shape is driven by the money flow. If people can't get the finance that will affect the trade. So we see the trend is without doubt digitization. Thank you very much.
Excellent speech. Thank you very much, uh, Tom James. This was a fantastic uh, discussion, fantastic presentation about truly about the future of digitalization, freight, finance, tracking, visibility, and transparency. So the key takeaway for me is that uh, the more transparent that you are, the better equipped you are to gain funding in the market, and that then improves your, your business case, your business model. So transparency equals uh, speed, and digitalization is a, a great driver of that. So uh, thanks again, Tom, for a, a fantastic speech. Um, just moving on for our, our program, we've assembled a cross-section of industry speakers in the, logi in the logistics industry, discuss perspectives on digitalization in the areas which are shaping their industries. So we've got a, a great uh, a panel for you today, and uh, my colleague uh, Julian Madsen will introduce that panel. We're going to have a little bit of uh, blocking and tackling as we move a couple chairs up on stage, uh, but I'd, at this point I'd like to welcome uh, Julian to the stage, and welcome Julian to Bangkok. Thank you so much, Chris. Hi, everyone, TIFA members, BFA members, colleagues of DP World. Great to be here. I'm uh, Julian Madsen. I work for DP World in Dubai, looking after business development in our logistics and, and technology division. I'm here to give, I promise to be brief, I'm here to give sort of a very brief uh, overview of, of the DP World strategy and also how we sort of approach digitization. It was great to hear Tom how he's t how he's taking lead in in digitization, both on the supply side, which is really around doing uh, processes more efficiently. We're going to talk a little bit more about the demand side as well, how to use online channels and digitalization to really drive additional demand. So, just a few words on on uh, DP World. I hope most of you know sort of the the the, the company as uh, at least. Uh, at least high level. So we're, I think, almost 150 nationalities uh, nowadays. This slide is a little bit old, so we just made two rather significant uh, acquisitions. So we're more than 100,000 people now, I believe. More than 80 uh, terminals. We are in more than 50 countries. And we have a capacity of around about 100 million uh, TUs globally. Uh, you, you will see the footprint uh, over here, so it, it constitutes both logistic assets, uh, our bread and butter, uh, terminal assets, marine divisions with, with feeders and NDOCCs, and then also free zones and economic zones that we manage in, uh, in, uh, in select geographies. So this is really how we used to present DP World and how we are still sort of, it's the DNA of the company, if you will. Uh, if we just deep dive into the example or the, the, the mothership, if you will, Dubai, where I sit every day, uh, Dubai is connecting a massive amount of trade from, from really one destination, which is our Jebel Ali uh, port. So you will see there's almost 150 ports connected with uh, 80 uh, weekly services. We have services connecting uh, throughout the region, uh, Indian subcontinent, the GCC countries. We have uh, numerous services connecting really the world through Jebel Ali as a primary gateway. And we have almost a 10,000 uh, port calls on a, on a weekly basis. So it's really a hub. And that hub we're trying to replicate in as many of these uh, dots that you saw before here. But what we're also doing and what is really sort of the, uh, the transformative vision of DP World is how to integrate all of these assets rather than just managing individual terminals or individual warehouses, we're making a, a great emphasis on trying to connect these and really transform the company into becoming a, a full-blown container logistics company, being able to move cargo from, from uh, point A to point B or from origin to, to destination. And this is not really, this is not a one-man job, so DP World is still growing out of a, a DNA as a terminal operator, so, so the very reason why we formed the DF Alliance and the very reason why we're trying to build uh, uh, economic zones and so forth is to try to sort of leverage an ecosystem of trade involving both uh, cargo owners, freight forwarders like most of yourselves and, uh, and also shipping lines and so forth. If we look a little bit about the 
transformation from a, from a port uh, point of view. I know uh, Captain Al Pesh will, will speak a little bit about Lam Shabang and what we're doing in Thailand uh, shortly hereafter, but we're really trying to diversify our service offerings from being mostly focused on, on, on uh, handling and on shipping lines as a primary customer and try to develop new port offerings that, that both uh, BCOs or cargo owners as, as well as freight forwarders and the wider trade community can leverage. So here are some examples of what we're doing in, in London Gateway. This is actually a slide I, 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 I stole from, from the UK team. So they're right now busy developing road access services, rail connectivity, storage services with warehouses and reefer capability, uh, CFS stations, and, and also ocean freight forwarding capability together with partners. And the idea is that rather than just have the sole or discrete, um, uh, uh, how to say, individual products, what, what, what we're trying to do is to enable all of these uh, products through uh, integrated uh, connectivity through a number of different applications. Both, uh, I think you, uh, Tom, referred to it as digitization, so basically enabling it through digital uh, processes but also in terms of offering it to the market as a holistic and, and, and integrated uh, solution. If we look a little bit about the, the, the trends that we see as, as DP World in the market, uh, we see a, a very strong trend from a customer point of view demanding end-to-end -end solutions. So it's no longer enough for individual contractors and individual service providers to deliver a small portion of the logistics value chain. The the final customer or the end customer expect an integrated uh, solution that covers ideally end to end. We're also seeing a strong uh, driver towards online demand. So more and more cargo that is booked today is actually booked via online channels where not only is the customer uh, scouting different options and seeking contingencies in a market that is very hot, they're also actually booking uh, straight on online platforms. Similarly, you have uh, smart applications, everything from click to book to different uh, ERP systems enabling uh, seamless uh, connectivity, visibility of, 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 of trade, and sort of a click to, click to book uh, functionality that makes the whole order process more seamless. And then finally, and this is probably the, the big threat uh, to a lot of people in this room, is the scale economies. So we have in the shipping uh, industry long seen uh, heavy consolidation among the shipping lines growing bigger and bigger and forming alliances. But what we're also seeing in more recent years is a vertical integration where, where every major player in the company is or in the, in the industry is trying to diversify their offering, acquiring uh, forwarding capabilities, acquiring additional assets, uh, acquiring um, capabilities that stretch far beyond uh, that of a shipping line or, or that of a terminal operator for that matter. And we look a little bit about how to respond uh, to these trends from a sort of a forwarder point of view or, or small and medium sized company point of view. We need to address those scale economies somehow and be able to compete against these giants. And a few of the ideas that we have and a uh, few of the ideas that really form a big part of the digital strategy in, uh, in DP World is uh, out of the box technology. So trying to really to come together and, and build uh, software, build solutions that can be leveraged by a community or an ecosystem of trade, as opposed to trying to build your own technology from scratch, company by company. Secondly, there's the development of online channels. So uh, how, to pool, how to pool demand online it's very, very difficult uh, with traditional company websites and as a traditional small or medium sized enterprise. But what we're seeing again and again and to a greater and greater extent is, is online channels or rather marketplaces where all the different uh, freight forwarders and even all the different cargo owners, they actually bid in and, uh, and contribute uh, freight opportunities or contribute demand and then the supplier and the, and the customer really meet on this marketplace. Then finally, there are the alliances. So I'm sure many in this room have had difficulties more recently to obtain competitive ocean freight. And that's of course part of this winner takes it all where the little guy struggles to really compete in a marketplace that is uh, 
highly competitive and really, really uh, 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 favors, let's say, the big guys. So what to, how to address that? Uh, one of the ideas is, uh, is to form alliances to see if you can somehow bundle demand or aggregate demand, not just within uh, individual companies, but actually as an alliance or, or group of companies. And if we look just finally, uh, I promise to do this brief, a little bit about the offerings that DP World are, are, are putting forward, at least in the digital space. They're actually trying to a large extent to cope with some of these trends. Firstly, there's the whole um, Cargo's uh, portfolio. So Cargo's is really a brand consisting of, of a number of different technologies and, and, and software suites. There's an ERP solution a little bit back to the out of box technology where that allows forwarders to, to quickly digitize the processes that, uh, that, that Tom uh, spoke about earlier. There's also integrated cargo tracking that is responding a little bit to the, uh, the customer's demand for end-to-end -end visibility. So all of a sudden you can fairly seamlessly offer your end customer a, uh, a cargo visibility that stretches from uh, origin to destination. And finally, the, there's the, the trade finance uh, offerings that, that, that Tom is leveraging and that we're also gonna demo uh, later today, which is also really just trying to enable trade by, by uh, partnering uh, institution, financial institutions with, uh, with cargo owners and forwarder, forwarders that need finance. Secondly, we have the marketplace, so really the online channel, which is C-Rates, that offers sort of a click-to-book uh, freight marketplace. So rather than being sort of a traditional forwarder or even a digital forwarder, in fact, it's a marketplace where individual freight forwarders can, uh, can submit rates on specific uh, corridors that they're competitive in. And then it's up to C-Rates to then market um, those rates and the platform as a whole to, to, to cargo owners looking for, for spot rates and, and more. Uh, and then finally, there is uh, there's a DF Alliance which is of course, uh, it's DP World's attempt at bringing together this uh, ecosystem of trade, not just in, in individual or regional uh, geographies, but actually as a global network that can be leveraged both in terms of sharing uh, business opportunities and uh, sharing leads and appointing sub-agents, but, but perhaps more innovatively, it offers uh, a whole platform of, uh, of software uh, it offers payment protection, and it, 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 really, it really tries to sort of challenge that traditional sense of a, of a trade association to become something more than just uh, uh, events like this one. So now uh, I'm just going to kick off the, the roundtable discussion here a little bit. I'm going to introduce uh, first uh, Captain Alpesh, my friend and colleague from DP World in, uh, in Thailand. Please welcome. And then we have Andy as well from uh, TIFA, EDI. Please join us uh, on the stage as well. And then we have Vichu from uh, Thai Global Logistics, who is one of the freight forwarders present here today. So if we just set up the chairs, I think uh, Alpesh, do you want to kick off and give us a brief introduction right. on uh, Lam Chibang? Thank you so much. So good afternoon, everyone. This is just to take you to the DP World terminal business side. So DP World in Thailand is uh, not a new entity. We have been in Thailand since 1998. DP World runs two terminals in Thailand. We have two terminals. We call them the B5 and the C3 in Lam Chai Bang. We started in 1998 with the first one. And 2004, we invested in another terminal. This is where you see the two terminals. That's the B5 and that's the C3. If you look through our growth profile over the last so many years, we started with a very small number of under 200,000 TUs per annum. And over the last few years, we have been around 1.5 million to 1.6 million TUs annually. Our commitment as DP World to Thailand industry is very obvious. You can see we started in 1998 with just one terminal and four QCs. And over a period of time, we have continuously been investing 
in hardware as well as software so that we can go ahead and keep serving the Thai industry. This is just a small timeline where you can see we started in 98, 2004, we again invested into cranes and another new terminal. 2015, we again bought bigger cranes and a few more RTGs so that we could handle bigger ships. In 2017, we changed a new terminal operating system, which today when we talk about digitalization and automation, it is a part of the entire activity to get our entire terminal automated in a certain way. 2021, which is last year, even during COVID, we continued our growth and we continued investment into getting bigger equipments and being able to handle larger ships and larger volume. So in 2021, we bought two more cranes and we update, upgraded our entire C3 terminal where we put new fenders, bollards, and we invested a lot of money to make sure that we can handle the bigger vessels which come in. In fact, 2022, which is last week, we again bought another new crane so that we can handle bigger vessels. So this is what we have today on the hardware side. This is how we as a terminal, we have cranes, we have RTGs, trucks, harbor cranes, reach stackers, side loaders. This is very port-centric presentation. This is last week. Uh, I'm happy to share this. You can see the picture. This is the crane which has just come in. Before we landed that crane, this is the picture, and this is the crane which has just come in. In fact, today is the first day we are going to be doing the test run of that crane and by early next week, we will have the crane up and running with us. So by doing this, we have actually upgraded our capabilities to be able to handle ships which are nearly 200,000 dead weight, 16,000 TUs, and nearly 400 meters in length. So these cranes and this equipment actually prepares DP World Thailand to be able to handle the largest ships which call Thailand today. When we are talking about digitization, I need to put my small efforts at LCIT to sort of digitize the port operations. And I think most of you would be using these activities because uh, during COVID, we realized that a lot of activities which were done by people actually visiting the terminal and standing in the queues and doing things manually had to be abruptly stopped. And during the peak of COVID, we went in and we started a lot of activities, which was to get the business online. We have the online free advice. We have the online payments. We have tried to do the e-tax invoice also. So these are a few small initiatives that we have taken. We also started a booking queue system. That means your people don't actually have to come and wait in a queue. You can do the queue online and then when your number comes in you can be there so that you know you don't have crowding on the terminal we also have been awarded the best place to work by the association so this year is the first year that we have got this award and we are very happy to say that we are here to serve dp world is here to serve thailand this is talking about the terminals, but like my colleague Julian mentioned, DP World Thailand now is looking at expanding our horizons beyond just being a terminal operator and also trying to connect the dots that you saw in Julian's presentation. We are trying to develop products. We are trying to create supply chain where we can help you, we can help the trade. And in Thailand, it's, we are very, very excited about Thailand. TIFA is a good partner with DP World both at Thailand and also at the Dubai level. We are working on a lot of uh, potential projects where we can create more support, whether it is on the infrastructure, whether it is development, whether it is SEZs, and more to come very soon. We will keep you posted. My team is on this table in case anybody of you would want to talk about anything in Lamchabang, my team is there after the presentation or during the networking, they will be there to help you. Thank you very much, and I would pass it to my colleague and my good friend, Andy, to take over. Thank you so much.
afternoon, everyone, distinguished guests. Uh, I have to say this is an inaugural for myself to be uh, as a part of this uh, event where there's uh, quite a few uh, foreigners. Okay, I haven't seen this for at least two and a half years, so welcome aboard, everyone. Uh, the slide I'm going to present today has to do with the community. Uh, I use the term community because it's a very unique organization. I joined TIFA about a uh, good 23 years, uh, counting today, and it's, it's just grow. That's why I use the term TIFA 2022, okay, it grows. You know. uh, so we went from a community of uh, freight forwarders or association, okay, as you will see later on, and then it you know, slowly grow in areas like education, freight education. So we have schools. And then we also go into cargo services like ICD, Inland Container Depot. So we move people right, and we move cargoes. So the last thing that's missing is the IT. Okay, so the board members you know, try to establish a good IT systems. And it's just at coincidental that Thai Customs happened to you know, be took the first initiative and in getting the digitized trade, as Tom was mentioning. Uh, back good, uh, I would say, 18 years already today. Okay, so we'll go through uh, all the details. Uh, the reason I, I put 2022, because back in 1987, that was when the association was formed. Okay. And uh, I'm sure many of the owners are sitting here, you know, in this room together. And then in 1997, uh, the reason that most of them have, uh, most of the uh, forward is owner have to set up or help each other set up the institution or the academy is so that uh, back then in 1997, there was no such thing as logistic department in universities. So we have to help ourselves because government wasn't helping. Okay, academic school wasn't helping. So we had to help ourselves. So a lot of the owner became instructor back then. And then one year later, 1998, this is one of the biggest investment that TIFA have ever made. Okay. When we received the concession from the State Railway of Thailand to uh, be one of the six terminal operator and the only Thai operator okay, in the Lakabang area. So that was in 1998. And then one year later, I joined the company. But back then it wasn't TIFA EDIs yet. So it was more like uh, we, were, they were, we were trying to establish an IT company to support the cargo, okay, the logistics in Thailand, and uh, Thai customs were looking at doing digitized trade. So we started up the TIFA EDI services in 1999. So altogether, we were about 23 years in the making. Now, and I'm going to go, sin since it's, this, is, this is the er area where we're talking about digitized trade, so I'm going to go a bit deeper for TIFA EDI services. Okay. Okay, to give you a good look, because a lot of people get confused when we talk about TIFA association, then you got TIFA group of companies, you know, are, are they cross-related in, in any way? Actually, not really. The association, uh, that's what the logo looks like. We got about 232 members at the moment, mostly, and I would say 90 plus percent, uh, small, medium enterprise, high, local tie. That's what we're trying to promote and support. So out of that, if you combine, it's about 20,000 employment, which is still less than if you are. <laughs> okay, with the capital investment about 9.9 .9 billion and the, uh, the annual revenue income about 99 billion. Then from the association, you know, they're not supposed to make any money, correct? Or any, any profit. So some of the companies from the member come and join in the financial investment and establish TIFA Company Limited. So this is a holding company okay, where all, uh, most of the uh, members uh, join in from in terms of investment and set up three other companies. The first one is the institution, we call it ITBS, International Trade Business School, tra Transport Business School. Uh, at the moment we got 13 staff, okay? And then we move on to TIFA ICD, this, this one right here. We got about 122 staff members, and then for TIFA EDI services, about 84. Okay, that's what the part I look at, the, the TIFA EDI services. So here on the bottom, you see that uh, the association 
will deal with the economic and industry policy. You know, there'll be the uh, speaker on behalf of the members uh, with the government of Thailand. And then we got human resources for uh, institution, academic. We got logistics services, ICD in Lakabang area. Mm -hmm. Then we got IT, information technology. Okay, so let's dive in a little bit. Okay, I won't take much of your time, but I think it will be interesting for you to get an update of what, how, how progress Thailand has made in the last 20 years. So tip for EDI services, these are our product and services. On the far left corner top, Okay, this is our core business, which deals with Thai customs and other government agencies okay, on digitized trade. Okay. On the bottom, we also do a bottom left, we do international trading of clients, and I heard a lot, a lot that Tom was talking about, the electronic airway bill, e-airway bill right here. Okay. Uh, the bottom to the, to the right, to the left. And then you got AFR for Japanese customs, okay. advanced uh, manifest. And you got AMS for U.S. Custom Border Patrol. Okay. So all this is, you know, is one of our services. Uh, we do value-added services here as well uh, on the IoT for smart logistics, electronic seal. So you imagine a, a seal on the container. We just put electronic components. So now we can track it without you having to actually look at the physical seal. And on the top, we also, top left, uh, top right, on the right, is the, we also do digitized trade but for modern trade industry. Which, you know, if you go to supermarket today, on the background, all the trade between themselves, the retailers and suppliers is all electronic. There's no more faxes, there's no more PDF file, nothing. Okay. So these are the two industry in Thailand that's a fully, I would say about good 99% uh, digitized, which is customs trade and also modern trade. Okay, so when, when I describe to people that, you know, this is what TIFA EDI do, uh, they still can't imagine, well, so what do you do? You know? So this picture should give you a pretty good insight. We'll start from the left. The left side gives you all the logistics documents, and you know how, how many documents we have in logistics. It's probably one of the most, okay? So we convert all that, okay, in using our software into file base, XML with digital signature. So that way you have no reason to tell Thai custom that I did not send this custom declaration. Okay, so everything is digitized, digitally signed, as well as encrypted. So you cannot hack, you know, people cannot see your, doc your declaration as it moves, okay, from your company to customs. And all that information is then sent over to TIFA. So we call ourselves value added network today. Okay. And then we also pass on that same file over to Gateway. Okay, there are three of them in Thailand. And then, then the Gateway pass on the same information over to National Single Window. Okay, which back then it was operated by Thai Customs. So thing has changed. So on the right hand side, okay, you see all the government agencies, Port Authority, Marine Department. Okay. So Basically, the value-added network, TIFA is one of them, and the gateway, we s we're right in the middle, uh, coordinating between the private sector and the public sector. And things will change this year, okay? Uh, if you notice that back then, we have gateways, so this extra hub, so that's a cost, okay, in turn into the, for the freight forwarder or the custom broker. So we, they're taking away, Thai custom said, okay, uh, Thai Custom will no longer be supporting or be uh, managing the national single window anymore. So they, uh, with the Thai government cabinet members, uh, agree okay, and uh, given approval to appoint uh, National Telecom Company Limited, or NT, to be an operator of NSW, which is on the right-hand side. Okay. So things are still moving the same okay, for forwarder, for our users, the same except the actual uh, body that actually do the managing of the national single window is now a private sector, which is NT. Continue on. Uh, international trade, okay. Similarly, we have airway bill and manifest. Okay. We have software that handles that, convert that over to XML file with digital signature, send it over to our partner, which is Kale Logistics on the bottom. 
Okay, that will handle all the airlines and uh, ground handling agent, AGSA, and a company called Traytech for all the AFR over to Japanese customs. Like that. Okay, and then for the modern trade, very similar again. We just simply convert all the documentation that's in paper base over to the XML or digitized data. So the purchase order, advance shipment notice, invoice, inventory, okay, all this is then received, okay, and some are uh, sent. Uh, it's received from the retailer on the right hand side, okay, through the value added network. Again, TIFA is one of them. There are three of them in, in the market. And then, uh, then once we receive the purchase order, advance shipment notice uh, from the retailer, we just pass it over to the suppliers. Supply to be broken up into two level, uh, big suppliers, people like Johnson Johnson, Shiseido. Okay, so those guys have ERP in the back office, so they can actually just import this data automatically into the system. No more rekeying. Okay, and then we have a smaller supplier, which is uh, we use a web based EC retail. Okay, because those guys, those suppliers, are very small, uh, and they just can't afford an, a, a good size ERP. So we just create a small size ERP, it's, uh, something smaller, but uh, similar in concept like the, the what DP World is doing. Okay. So that's the, uh, the whole idea of how we digitize uh, our trade in Thailand. And uh, I must say that uh, without Thai customs, and I, I, if every stage that I go to, every event I go, I always have to say this, that uh, without Thai custom, without the, the actual strong support and man mandate, by Thai custom and other government agency, we won't be here in terms of digitized trade. And uh, I think we're far ahead, okay, of all the uh, CLMVT, CLMV uh, countries. Uh, I, I would say, from my personal experience, I think even Malaysia, okay, we are a bit advanced than them as well. Okay, so this is how the way I see community of TIFA as an organization. And uh, I must say that if you have any question on how this is set up, it's very incredible. Uh, when, when I joined this company, this organization, I go, how did you guys do it? You know, because in, in the board, okay, of the, whether it be association members or the board of the TIFA group, uh, they're actually competitors. But when they're together, okay, they strategize, they put out a plan, and they just execute everything. And that's how far we have gone so far in 22, 23 years. Okay. Thank you. Thanks a lot for that, Andy. Mr. Vichu, your turn. Hi, uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Vichu Sonnitak from Thai Global Logistic. So I, uh, let me introduce my company. Thai Global Logistics is Thailand International Logistics provide the does offer international transport service and logistics solution from and to any trade in the world using all existing transport modes such as air freight, ocean freight, and trucking service. Thai Global Logistics currently title guarantee to third customer outstanding service quality, they are able to handle all your transport needs and recruitment. TGL have a real dedicated team of professionals to take care of your complete custom clearance procedures, help with uh, support and adapt to team uh, custom clearance agent who request agents who are proficient in trust work and to with all mandatory documents and our clients they will take care of all essential documents get them prepared and as at interface between our customer and custom 
they are able to provide cancer free and quick custom care in service for Thai and NK to import as well as export. So thank you for my short interview. Thank you. Thanks so much, Bichu. Thanks so much, Andy and, and El Pesh as well. I just spoke to uh, Chris and he's saying in the interest of, uh, of networking, we simply have to uh, cut this panel discussion very, very short. In fact, I think we should, uh, we should bring it forward and, and, and have that discussion uh, in, in a plenary session when we have the, the reception, I think in half an hour's time or so. I hope that's okay for everyone. So thank you so much, everyone, for, for interesting presentation. We're gonna move on. Uh, Chris, thank you. Thank you very much, Julian. Thank you, uh, Captain Alpash. Kun uh, Chu and Kun uh, Anasorn, great, uh, great topics and very interesting to hear about your companies and the role of digitalization. Um, I'd like to introduce uh, next is um, Che Montefalcon, who is a manager in our DF Alliance program. Uh, she's from the Philippines and she joins us here today from Manila. Uh, please welcome Che to the podium. Thank you. Greetings everyone and sawadika. I am very honored here to present Ku Digital Freight Alliances, what we do and how we can revolutionize the way that we do logistics. And yeah, again, I am Shema Te Falcon. I am proud to be part of Digital Freight Alliance for more than a year. And I have seen how we have helped small and medium freight form orders around the globe with the aim to go digital. So DFA was founded in 2020, in the middle of pandemic where we saw how valuable, valuable digitalization is. And with that, we have the vision to provide uh, web-based tools, a comprehensive ERP system, networking, and commercial opportunities through air, sea, and land. Today, we are proud that we have reached 190 plus countries and we are providing them benefits such as payment protection and also a global freight forwarding network. So here you can see how we have influenced and grown in the past two years. We have reached 197 plus countries and also helped 3,900 members and counties. So how did we, di uh, how have we done it? Of course, as mentioned earlier, the success of a community is based on its members. We provide engagement, growth, and trust. We have a series of platforms where our members are engaging on a daily basis, creating them growth through business opportunities, and of course, it results to trust. As an association created by one of the world's leading trade enablers, DP World. Now, once you associate your business with us, we all, uh, of course, provide you web-based tools, growth of, of your business. We have lots of assets in TP World and we have knowledge sharing in the community. And also you have access to other TP World products. Now, this is the exciting part, some of the digi digital solutions that we provide. First, we have Cargo's Runner will be discussed uh, by our friend here. Uh, Ayaz and uh, Ganesh later. So it's an ERP system designed for our freight forwarders. We also have this Logistics Explorer, which is a unique online quotation tool for uh, transport to be uh, accessible by our clients on a 24 seven. And you won't miss any leads because of this tool because it is available on your website. So to give you a better idea on how it works, 
let me share you this uh, video. So this is one of our partner CMS. You can see that your customers can just go to your homepage, select the port of origin and the destination, and they can also provide the readiness of their cargo here. And then once they have decided with that, they can also select the mode of transportation, what type of cargoes they would need to use. And when they click search, they will be provided with their quotation instantly, which is what we need today, an instant and uh, accessible um, information. So this, we have a back end of this tool already, so you don't have to develop anything. We have top of the class rate management system where you can upload your rates and also upload the rates of your partners so that it will be readily available to your clients. So in a nutshell, the Logistics Explorer itself provides accessibility to your customers 24 seven and you won't never miss a lead it also makes your business experience faster, more responsive, and more efficient. And also, it's a new way to approach new customers and enhance the way you already take care of your existing customers. And then you can also ex diversify and expand your business through subscription of rates of other partners. So this is also, a, there's also a quick request uh, option that will motivate them to contact you and create new leads. So yeah, you can generate leads just through this platform alone. Now, of course, once you have uh, created your booking, once our customers are agreed to, their, to the rates that we have, of the next question is how can they track their cargo? And now we have created a tracking system that ultimately uh, uh, tracks your cargo anytime, anywhere. So this is a unique application that was created with the aim of tracking the cargo without the need to visit multiple websites. So it's more efficient, not only for us, but also for our clients. So to understand this better, again, we'll have this, uh, one of our partners, CMS. Your customers just have to type in the container number it will automatically detect that which shipping line it is uh, using. And even if your container is underwater, it is detected by the system. Amazing, is it? All right. Now we have also an enhanced version of a tracking tool called Cargo Flow, which is a cargo visibility tool that will be discussed on later. And now we also have a check uh, your uh, shipping schedule. Uh, someone asked me this earlier, how we have developed this or how does this work? So we are connected to 100 plus major shipping lines and we're continuously expanding our reach so that you'll only have a sole and one tool to check all the schedule of different shipping lines. And to have a better idea of this, so again, You'll just have to type in the ports that you wish to check the schedules of, and then you have to select, for, for example, for a span of two weeks, you want to check their schedule. When you click search, it generates all the schedule of shipping lines. So you can see here, uh, we have uh, CMA, CGM, CMA, CJM, and other uh, shipping lines here. You can select and also um, analyze how many days it will take from one port to another, the number of shipment dates, and also you can also check here by vessel details. Now that I have shown you all the tools, how interesting it is, we can also provide you these tools on your website. And with just three easy steps, you can have it. So you have met some of our colleagues earlier, our account managers during the registration. You can approach them and ask for the codes and we'll provide it to you. Now, if you have your IT programmer or your IT team in your um, in-house IT team, they can integrate these codes and it will be available to your system. Or 
We can also help you with our top of the uh, IT team and we'll help you integrate these tools instantly. We also offer widget customization so that we can, uh, we can follow your branding or your style and it will be more uh, interesting for your customers. Now, this is an interesting part, the business opportunities. Uh, earlier, Juliet already showed you C rates. So to elaborate it further, it is a marketplace where shippers and BCOs go to to book their requests. Currently, we have around 20,000 visitors alone on this website, and we are converting 30 bookings on a daily basis. So with that, you're already expanding your market through uploading your rates in our platform. So also, as a community, we also empower our freight forwarders by increasing their sales so they can connect to other freight forwarders over the rates and also ex diversify their business. So I believe we have uh, some members here from uh, India and Bangladesh, for example, and they wish to sell the rates or a partner in Thailand, so they can do that through this platform as well. And part of general networking, once you sign up, some of our members here uh, did the sign up earlier, you're already included in this digital directory where you can make uh, bookings, follow your uh, rates, and also make a connection with other free forwarders. We have a dashboard in our uh, virtual office which you can access. You can also download your badge and certificate as addition of your credibility for your customers as part of DB World. We also created a payment protection to, of course, provide confidence and trust to our customers and premium members, and this is available for our premium to premium members. And of course, we have this events like this. We had one of our first annual gathering last March, and we're very happy to conduct our first Asian roadshow here in Thailand. So to summarize all the plans that we have, we have two tiers for membership. First is the standard package or, or the free membership. You'll get the logistics platform. You'll also be included in our directory and have the badge and certificate as part of your tier. However, what we encourage you to have the full experience of digitalization is to upgrade to premium membership where you can be included to our close members chat and gain instant businesses. We also have uh, trials for our new tools and uh, solutions called Cargos Runner and Cargos Flow. You'll have an extra market of 20,000 users when you share your rates in crates.com. You'll have the payment protection, the shipping schedule, container tracking. You can customize these widgets on your website and you'll have our account managers dedicated to help you grow your business with C rates, upload your rates, and diversify your business. So just a preview of how much all this values actually cost. On the total, it's actually 31,000 US dollars. However, as we are trying to empower small and medium freight forwarders, you can get it for 3,588 US dollars on an annual basis. That's already a saving of 89% of all these values that you can see here in the screen. So guys, what are you waiting for? You can uh, have this QR code scan, you can register and join us and move to the digital way of doing logistics. Thank you and kapun ka. How about another round of applause for Che Manta Falcon? <laughs> All right. And that is, uh, that is a great Sawadi Ka, by the way. She's practiced that for several weeks. Uh, so I'd like to now welcome to the uh, stage uh, 
two colleagues, Ganesh Singh and Ayaz Makbal, who will uh, tell us more about the Cargo's Runner and the Cargo's Flow tool. Cargo's Runner is a full ERP suite, um, and Cargo's Flow is a track and trace order management tool. So we're going to give you a quick demo of those tools. And uh, after that, we've got one more uh, quick demonstration with Cargo's Finance by our colleague, Victor Yankovsky. Then we're going to uh, break for uh, beverages and the reception up on the 37th floor. So almost done, another 20 minutes. Welcome Ganesh and Ayaz to the stage, please. Hi everyone, hi Tifa and uh, all the respected members here. Uh, very, very pleased to be in Thailand, such a beautiful country, and uh, a great honor to, to meet all of you. Uh, so in terms of Cargo's runner and flow, I'll run it very quickly. I've been accused, by the way, that I usually take very long to convey a message. And I've got two people, two of my colleagues, keeping a tap, and one said five minutes before we'll give you a warning, and the other one said two minutes before. I hope I'll do better this time. I'm in Thailand, right? So Cargo's Runner is basically, and you heard about it, right? It's, it's basically an ERP built as part of the overall digitalization strategy of DP World to assist the logistics service providers and freight forwarders that we found that, you know, needed a system like Cargo's Runner, which sort of manages uh, you know, the challenges in terms of managing end-to-end -end operations of freight forwarding, right? And at the same time, how could we improve the customer services that the freight forwarding industry offers to its customer by way of giving tools in the hands of their customers, right? Not only digitizing the freight forwarders, but also going beyond in terms of how their customers can actually be empowered to interact with freight forwarders through digital tools. And then this ERP uh, also sort of covers, you know, the key sort of pain points. So we learned from talking to hundreds of freight forwarders that the industry needed digital transformation. A lot of freight forwarders more likely to, in the SME sector, we found that were using more or less like offline processing methods like either emails or many of them were using Excel sheets. And one could appreciate the challenges that, you know, using offline method in today's time that you face with. Uh, the business environment is fast changing, your customer expectations are changing. And then as well as, you know, that you need to integrate with several different other parties when it comes to booking a particular shipment, right? Uh, so there were very limited integrations. So we having looked at all these aspects and as well as learned that the margins in freight forwarding industry, you know, are also thin and more towards, you know, like uh, reduced profitability and so on and so forth. So we built this ERP which sort of addresses all these challenges in one single platform and it gives you sort of a capability where the freight forwarder can manage everything from providing customer quotation to all the way billing the customer and everything in between that comes to your mind. And integrations were the key to this, to the success of this product. So for example, today, uh, a customer can interact with the freight forwarder by virtue of having access to the portal the freight forwarder can then go and book the shipment based on the request from the customer and directly book the container with the shipping line, get the uh, master bill of lading, all the associated shipping documents, do the customs filing. And I heard before uh, from some of the members of TIFA, so glad to share that we have built customs filing especially for many, many countries, but more specifically for North America. So for all the AMS, intelligent uh, security filing, ISF, or advanced cargo uh, information for, not for Canada, we built all these integrations as we speak, right? 
and expanding these integrations for several different markets. We now also have integrations in progress for the APEC countries, uh, likewise for India. And with these integrations, with be it with the shipping line or with uh, airlines in terms of getting the uh, schedules and statuses for flight uh, or the airables inventory on the system or the customs filing, all of it is in one single platform, right? Uh, in addition to uh, a very, very powerful reporting and dashboards that we have built in this product, and it also allows you to, so I'm not flipping through the slides, I'm speaking through my memory. So it also then gives you the ability to uh, sort of do your month end closing. It has a complete receivable, payable, and general ledger module fully integrated into one single platform where you can raise bills for your customers, do payments to your suppliers, uh, do your month end closing, trial balance, profit and loss statement, all of it that a freight forwarder requires with a promise that we have one stop solution. We did not want that when cargo's runner goes to a freight forwarder that you have five more systems sitting in your uh, organization. This product is completely cloud, uh, so there is no investment which is needed from the freight forwarders to deploy the solution. We can implement the solution that gives you door-to-door -door visibility of all your business processes. And the key modules, you know, which I've covered already, you know, you can manage all types of orders, whether import, export, domestic, multimodal, air, sea, or road. Uh, you can maintain all these sailing schedules on the platform. You have the booking capability, the customs declarations are fully integrated, and on top of that, you've got a very, very sophisticated document management where you can exchange documents between multiple parties. That is what Cargo's Runner is. Uh, we are very happy to meet you in the networking session and show the demo of the product if you uh, folks are interested. Uh, I, and also, uh, we'll be happy to connect, uh, you know, subsequently in terms of how this product can be given. You've already seen from uh, my colleague in DFA that, you know, for DFA premium members, uh, Cargo's Runner does not cost you anything. It just comes free of cost. So you can actually enjoy a very sophisticated ERP, uh, you know, that can manage all your business activities with literally no cost if you become a premium member of DFA. Uh, with TIFA, we're trying to you know, offer this product to all the TIFA members at a very, very sp uh, you know, uh, special package. Uh, details of that will also be shared. Uh, so this is very much what the Cargo's Runner is. I've got some screenshots, uh, easy, you know, like you log in. So implementation can be done in just about two weeks. We basically have got fast track implementation. In two weeks, you can be live on the system. Uh, the screens are very, very user friendly. We have heard from many customers who've gone live. Uh, currently, we are doing implementations in about 20 plus countries and have got uh, freight forwarders which are managing uh, hundreds and thousands of containers or TUs through this platform. Uh, uh, and great support that comes along with it. Some of the screenshots in terms of looking at the simplicity of the application, the shipment, you know, we got charges and invoices uh, that you can produce from the system. A very, very uh, powerful user-friendly analytical dashboard that gives you complete understanding of profitability at the level of shipment. We understood that's very important in freight forwarding industry, but you can also look at, you know, which customer which trade lane, which shipping line, which countries your business is more profitable than the others, right? So with that, uh, I would leave uh, a lot of these details uh, to be covered in the networking event because how well am I doing, my friend? All right, okay. So I think uh, I needed to be in Thailand to improve my, my timing, it seems. Uh, so that's what Cargo's Runner is. Uh, very happy, this is some of the sort of uh, very uh, like encouraging feedback from some of our customers, 
log boy from US, Kenya, Uganda, multi-country operation, uh, was very, very pleased to use the system, uh, felt that you know the system really helped uh, them a great deal. Uh, we've got Xeon Logistics from India, uh, again, similar feedback. We have uh, feedback from fast shipping and UAE, uh, uh, so and so forth. So that's very much about Cargo's Runner, the ERP for freight forwarding industry, and we'll be extremely pleased to offer you this. Uh, and being a DFA premium member, this just doesn't cost you anything. It comes sort of, and within two weeks, you can actually be, go, uh, be live. Uh, Cargo's Flow uh, is a shipment uh, tracking, uh, track and trace tool. I, it allows you to uh, manage uh, and have visibility of all your shipments uh, end to end uh, in terms of any expected time of arrival, any departure delays, uh, any uh, sort of uh, uh, events that you know happens during the course of travel of these shipments. Uh, and it is multimodal, so not only just ocean side of it, we have now covered on the air cargo tracking, and as well as you can do the road shipment tracking, wherein we just need to integrate with your shipping uh, or trucking companies. So uh, the challenges are not new. I mean, you guys have come from freight forwarding industry. You are the masters of right, what the problems are. Having again heard a lot of these challenges from freight forwarders and shippers, we understood that visibility is extremely critical when it comes to logistics industry, right? And 90% of these shippers are using visibility capability when they're making the decision on which shipping lines, which uh, logistics partner they want to select. And yet only 6% of the shippers have got some capability to manage the shipping visibility. So a huge gap in terms of what the challenges are and how well these challenges are actually addressed. Uh, looking at that, that is where DP World uh, built this technology called Cargo's Flow, which is today connected with more than 50 shipping lines and more than 100 airline uh, for, for the cargo on the air side of it. And we use uh, uh, multiple technologies to sort of meet this challenge that you know the industry is faced with. So whether it's about weather condition, right, uh, congestions on the road or the port, or the navigational hazards, or the delay in data accuracy, we have seen this many, many times, customers coming back and saying, you know what, the shipping lines are telling us actually post the delay, post the event, and then there is nothing much left in the hands of shippers or freight forwarders to take a corrective action. So Based on a lot of those issues and challenges that we saw, we came up with our solution, which offers end-to-end -end tracking uh, of the multimodal shipments from uh, origin to destination. We also looked at that the supply chain visibility is pretty critical, where you know we understand the availability of your product for every purchase order. And today, a lot of our shippers uh, medium sized large size shippers that we are uh, that they are using cargo's flow are telling us that you know uh, our manufacturing plants are required visibility at the level of a product right the logistics person look at the visibility from the ETA and ETD's perspective whereas a retailer is saying that you know I would want to look at which uh, container carrying what product and when would that arrive in and if there is a delay what corrective action can I take? So having seen uh, all of that, the cargo's flow also therefore gives you a complete end-to-end -end supply chain visibility. Uh, document sharing is a very powerful capability again here, where the shipper can actually attach all the shipping documents when tracking the container and share these shipping documents with multiple logistics service providers, be it a freight forwarder, or a customs broker, or their customers in terms of them having a complete tracking of their uh, shipment visibility. Uh, the platform also enables the exceptions handling. So you know you can set the exceptions very, very user-friendly. 
in terms of how many days of free storage you want to be tracking, how many days of delay should it be raising a severity alert, and very, very powerful performance analytics. Because logistics uh, departments or professionals or the freight forwarders typically would like to see you know, which trade lanes, which shipping lines, which ports uh, you know, are more sort of cost effective, uh, performing based on the expectations, so and so forth. So that's what our solution is on Cargo's Flow. Uh, it's a product which is built uh, by DP World, deeply integrated with more than 50 plus shipping lines, uh, and as well as with ports uh, uh, in terms of you know providing a very very highly accurate data, uh, and the solution therefore sort of gives you an assurance on a very high level of accuracy. All right, uh, as I said, it does the tracking of intermodal shipments end to end from, uh, you know, like soon you book the container uh, and all the way, you know, when the uh, empty container is returned from a shipper uh, from their warehouse back to the port for the shipping line to pick it up. Everything in between is completely tracked. Uh, as I said, a carrier coverage, we cover more than 50 uh, plus shipments, uh, shipping lines ocean shipping lines, we've got close to 100 plus airlines that we today integrated with. And uh, uh, with that, you know, the, high, the level of accuracy is extremely high. Uh, yeah, the advantages, uh, you know, as you see, is like it's a, it's a tool again, which is cloud-based, one platform across all the carriers. We know that, you know, manually freight forwarders or shippers typically go to all the websites, collect the data in an Excel sheet, but then still miss, uh, you know, the powerful features of alerts uh, and as well as the analytics and as well as the performance dashboards. Uh, and we have tried to build all of that in one single platform in order to not only offer it like a very cost effective solution, but also improve the efficiency for our uh, freight forwarders and as well as the customers. We have seen this tool also that, you know, it is a revenue generation tool for freight forwarders because you could actually offer, uh, you know, the live tracking links to your customers as freight forwarder and you could charge uh, your customers uh, and we have seen customers are very happy to pay, you know, a dollar or two or three per container tracking because on an average, uh, you know, twenty to thirty thousand dollar worth of freight sitting inside a container, and they don't mind, right? Getting all of this information, right, to pay a small fee. So we saw that this tool if, is actually a very, very good tool for freight forwarders that they can actually make money out of it. They can give this as a service to their customers, right? Uh, and again, you know, like uh, uh, this tool comes with a lo lot of uh, sort of capabilities in terms of. Uh, you know, if you if you sign up for DFA premium membership, you also enjoy a very very cost effective uh, subscription for Cargo's Flow, right? Uh, it literally comes free uh, to a great extent. So some of the like uh, again like screenshots I took, we'll be happy to again show you a demo if you like, uh, like a dashboard. You know, it gives you a global view, like. Uh, where the containers are in terms of arrival and departure, both import, export, right? Uh, whether very user friendly, it gives you a calendar view where we have heard from both freight forwarders and shippers that they find it very intuitive, right? Because literally sitting today, you could visualize in the next week or week after or two weeks after, what are your containers which are arriving or what are the containers that you planned that they are going to be departing, right? So you can get a complete view of that and click of a button, you get further details of it, right? Gives you shipment visibility like, you know, you use your Uber application today, right? It gives you very, very powerful shipment visibility of where the container is, how the movement of the container is, uh, when is it going to be at the transit port, when will it move from there to the final destination, so and so forth. Uh, KPIs and analytics, as I said, extremely important for logistics service providers and BCOs or the shippers. 
right? They need to make decision, which shipping line, which ports, uh, which logistic service provider are more cost effective from them, right? They can make a lot of those decisions using our uh, analytics and uh, KPIs dashboard. Uh, that's pretty much, you know, what the cargo's flow is. How well did I do on my slides? Oh my God. All right. So uh, I hope I could convey, you know, like uh, a message about cargo's runner and flow, but we are here, uh, happy to chat, happy to show you the products, and uh, uh, really welcome all of you once again uh, to this event. Thanks a lot. Yes, and Ganesh, thank you very much. Uh, great uh, presentation on uh, Cargo's Flow and Cargo's Runner. Almost done. Uh, but last but not least, we have Victor Yankovsky from Cargo's Finance. Victor's going to tell us uh, a little bit more about the Cargo's Finance product, shed more light on the case study, which uh, Tom James mentioned. And uh, please welcome to the stage Victor Yankovsky. everyone so let me just yes there we go so it's very nice to meet everyone thank you for your time uh, I hate being you know standing between this time and very tasty snacks and drinks <laughs> that we are going to have you know very much soon but uh, just as a quick uh, sort of you know introduction of the product which I believe is very important um, this product is a part of cargos family as well. Uh, so same as my uh, colleagues prior to that mentioned, you know, cargos.com is a part of DP World itself. So my name is Victor and I'm a global head of sales for Cargos Finance, which is a financial arm of uh, DP World, uh, cargos.com. So basically, um, we, um, uh, I'm, I'm not going to uh, repeat maybe some data that you have seen before, you know, DP World is the global consortium and, you know, we have managed to um, to grow very significantly. I, I personally joined the company uh, back in December last year, you know, and uh, I was impressed that we have, you know, 42,000 employees in the world. Uh, by May this year, we have 95,000 employees. So basically, over in, in the span of six months, you know, we have managed to grow more than twice by very actively engaging and, and, and acquiring, you know, various, you know, companies in the world. So for us, it gives us a great opportunity, you know, for, for visibility for the entire trade. And as my colleagues and um, Tom mentioned before, um, digitization on the visibility of the trade is one of the key factors for many businesses and for many uh, companies. So we understand, you know, while analyzing, you know, the, um, uh, the, the, the ecosystem itself, that there are two major problems, you know, that can be sort of, you know, addressed. So the first problem, the first uh, barrier for smarter trade is related to infrastructure. And uh, within DP World, you know, we have managed to uh, provide infrastructure basically from A to Z, you know. So um, I, I'm not going to, 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 to spend too much time on that, but just very recently we have managed to finance transaction from the very far rural part of uh, India uh, towards uh, UAE and none of the FIs were interested to do, to do this, none of the financial institutions, until we have provided the visibility from the warehouse based out of, you know, uh, rural part of India, uh, railway in India, which is also controlled by us, then uh, port Navasheva in, in near Mumbai controlled by us, then our own vessel line uh, going to Dubai, then uh, <laughs> Jabal Ali port, which is owned by DP World, and Jabza Free Zone. So basically, for a financial institution, it gives a very, very good visibility from A to Z, from, from, from the like, you know, warehouse logistic terminal to the end warehouse logistic terminal of the client. The second biggest barrier that you know, we have 
identified was the lack of trade finance. So basically, I'm not sure if you know you 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 have seen this figure, but this figure is 1.7 trillion, which is a trade finance gap in the world. You know, it's not something that I have made up. You know, it's uh, calculated by McKinsey and World Bank, and uh, in fact, this figure has been tremendously growing. You know, over the past uh, uh, couple of years because of COVID. So I heard that you know, as of the end of this year, this gap would be 2.1 trillion dollars. Why this gap exists? Uh, I mean, there are a few reasons. Um, I would say that uh, concentrating on financing uh, transactions for the emerging markets, I've realized that in, in markets like India or Thailand or other, other markets, uh, a huge part of the business consists of SMEs. So for instance, uh, more than 50%, 51% of the entire global trade is contributed by SMEs. It's it's a tremendous figure. It's you know more than half, but only 10% of their trade is actually financed by traditional institutions. So this kind of you know, mismatch uh, is, is resulted by several reasons, and those reasons are related to a little bit more traditional approach of financial institutions. So if I'm a bank, if I'm a traditional I don't know, insurance company, I would only look at some particular indicators, and I wouldn't care about a particular trade between company A and company B. So um, financial institutions, they normally require data, a lot of data. They require to have you know, very well maintained financials. But if I'm a small trader from Dubai or from India, I may not have you know, financial director educated from Stanford, right? You know, it can be my, I don't know, uncle working as a financial accountant and helping me, me with finances. Um, also for financial institutions, it's a big problem not to have a visibility of underlying trade. You know, so they simply do not know if trade exists or if it's like you know, fake or forged. Um, so basically, uh, same applies, you know, to same applies, you know, to both sides, to suppliers and to buyers as well. So basically, as the result, more than 50% of you know SME applications to financial institutions, you know, have been rejected. Um, so um, when we realized that, you know, we uh, understood that, you know, we can we can actually address that, and um, doing well. Yeah, um, this gap can be addressed in several ways. You know, so first of all, you know, collateralization, so collaterals or assets, you know, that can be provided. W what could that be? I mean, if I'm an, a small, if I'm a small SME. I have already dealt with the bank. I have already provided them enough collateral. But if my business is growing, I may not have enough collateral for my, for my next growth. Uh, trade history, again, if I'm a small SME, how do I provide a trade history for the new market? Let's say I'm entering market of Thailand. I know that you know, there's demand for my products, but there's no trade history per se. And last but not least, you know, for financial institutions, it's extremely important to make sure that you know AML and KYC procedures are fully compliant accordingly to their local uh, regulations. You know, which is which is quite straightforward and getting more straightforward as we speak. So, um, considering all that, I mean, I, I think you know this kind of you know, interface. You know, you have seen before from Ayaza's presentation and some other presentations. You know, we have created a platform called Cargos, Do Cargos Finance. So basically, Cargos Finance is the platform where we address this gap, you know, for uh, SME companies and, and, and larger companies as well struggling with identifying financial solutions by following, you know, very simple steps. Uh, one of the most important things that, you know, we normally present to our uh, clients and to financial institutions is that we can provide a visibility of the underlying trade. So something that if I'm a bank, I may not be able to, to view it. If I'm a private financial organization, I may not be able to, 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 to have it. And basically by integrating you know, financial capability and financial expertise with visibility of underlying trade makes a huge difference and provides a lot of comfort to financial institutions which are willing to finance SMEs, but they don't know how. Now they do. In a nutshell, I mean, we are a very, very young organization. So we've just started, you know, last year, 
uh, literally, literally a year ago. Uh, company was incorporated in Dubai. Um, by uh, September, you know, we have onboarded you know, first clients and first you know, financial institutions. By January, we crossed you know, $1 million in disbursals. And uh, by the end of March, we crossed $10 million in disbursals. Uh, and you know, we are regulated by Dubai uh, Financial Services Authority. So if your organization or your friends you know, would like to become a client, you know, I normally present this to clients as a, as a marketplace. So basically, you, have, you, you only register once. It's a very simple process of registration. And then after that, you have uh, all access to financial institutions that we can provide to you. As of now, there are 17 financial institutions on the platform. They're based out of uh, Asia, UAE, Europe, UK, uh, Australia, South Africa, and the uh, USA. And they're happy to provide coverage for nearly 120 countries globally. So it doesn't matter if you're based in Thailand, in India, in the UAE, or in the UK. You can quickly hop on the platform and get like a one-stop shop, you know, uh, reviewing these, fin these financial institutions. Meaning to say that you don't have to, s to uh, you know, to spend your time on investing in the relationships or with, with different bankers on uh, sort of, you know, providing them KYC. It's a one-stop shop. We collect all the data from you, and this is my role to help you as, as clients to get financing ASAP. There are three major pillars of our financial products. I would say they're all related to working capital solutions. So everywhere and anywhere where you have deferred payment terms from, let's say, 15 days to 120 days is something that we can help you with. You know, so trade finance, logistics finance, and inventory finance is something that you know, we are specialized in. Uh, Tom has mentioned in the very beginning about our example, uh, about our very recent you know, success you know, with one of the commodity traders you know, in the UAE. They were selling you know, coffee, but it doesn't really matter. It can be any sort of you know, commodity. As long as you know, we, are, we, are, we, you know, we are providing these you know, digitized uh, inventory financing solutions, financial institutions are very much comfortable. So, so Tom's you know, esteemed company, Trade Floor Capital, was able to finance that transaction, even though you know uh, it's it's a very very unique combination of, uh, of of services and products. So I would say that uh, for us, digitization and working at the edge of the financial products, you know, uh, to make sure that we understand clients' needs is the most important thing. Um, very quickly, the process itself. I mean, the way how it works. Um, registration uh, online takes literally a few clicks you know so we benchmarking ourselves against guys like you know Revolut for instance you know so uh, for one of our uh, uh, we, we have two uh, sort of uh, parts of the platform so the first part is for the UAE client and the other part is for non UAE client let's say for Thailand so if you're a company based out of Thailand and you want to register it will take around two to three minutes only to register which is extreme, extremely fast and then after that, you know, we will process through the uh, next stages of, you know, credit, you know, facility application, underwriting, and so on and so forth. So overall, from door to door, it can take just, you know, a couple of, you know, uh, from a couple of days to a couple of weeks until you get financed, which is extremely fast. Uh, and for financial institutions, when we speak to them, uh, I would say it's very important that they really understand and they really see, you know, the entire underlying trade process. My, probably my last slide actually here uh, is related to another example that I wanted to share. So on top of, you know, what Tom mentioned before about uh, digitizing of inventory finance, we have also, digi di we are also digitizing, you know, electronic house bill of lading. Why we are doing this? We are doing this in order to provide, uh, again, more visibility of the trade and to extend you know, payment terms, you know, if and when needed. So it's not, not only related to, to financing based on master bill of lading, now it's related to financing on a combination of house bill of lading, you know, controlled by DP World and master bill of lading itself, you know, which is, again, another very unique you know, proposition, uh, which probably nobody else, you know, proposes in the market. Um, I, 
understand that you know we are basically running out of time, so thank you for noticing this. Um, I will be here you know, till the end of the event, you know, so please approach me. Again, my name is Victor, and would, I would be happy to answer any questions of yours. Thank you so much for your time, and hope to see you soon. Thank you, Victor. Thank you also to our guest speakers today, Dr. Tom James, CEO and CIO of Trayflow Capital Management, Kun Tun Santi Bunyarat, President of TIFA, Kun Chu Sunton Wipat, Director of Thai Global Logistics, and finally, Kun Anasorn Lovacit, MD of TIFA EDI, and then also Captain Alpash Sharma, CEO of Lam Chabang International Terminal. Thank you very much. And please join us for beverages, food, and a networking reception on the 37th floor, the A-Bar. Our team will be, th will be there to explain more on our tools. We're very excited to have you join us uh, for beverages and some snacks and a reception and some networking and to share our, our uh, fellowship together. So we really appreciate you attending the event today. And uh, please give a round of applause to all the speakers today. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Kyo my cap. Kyo na my cap. Okay, great. Thanks again, everybody. And uh, this event concludes today. Thank you. <laughs>